What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Harvey. It's Friday, about 2 o'clock. Just dropping you a, a Chapter 8 lecture on the second part of this lecture, and let's rock and roll. Here we go. Um, so, yesterday we talked about mercantilism. You should be able to define what mercantilism is. You should be able to give, after this uh, lecture, you'll be able to give some more examples of how countries instituted mercantilism uh, to control their economies. Um, and we've kind of been touch, t uh, talking and touch and go on mercantilism throughout this class. Um, and today we're going to talk about Spain and how Spain, you know, was still colonial and was still instituting mer mercantilism during the, uh, during the 18th century. Um, here we go. So, as we know, and we've talked about this before, Spain, not open to new ideas, very, very uh, a Catholic country, uh, and Spain had suffered and taken some serious L's leading up to the 18th century. Think uh, uh, the the revolt in the their Protestant Netherlands. They lost. Uh, they lost they, the, which they officially lost in 1648 uh, with the Treaty of Westphalia. Uh, lost territory to the French during the uh, 17th century, 1600s. Uh, lost territory to Great Britain with the Treaty of Utrecht. Uh, lost Gibraltar and Menorca in the Treaty of Utrecht, 1713. Uh, Spanish Armada, 1588, lost. Spain has been taking some serious L's since the 16th and 17th centuries. So up in the 18th century, uh, they're pretty weak. Okay, and we're really, uh, after this chapter, we're really not going to touch on Spain for a while. Um, here we go. So this their, their colonial system during the 18th century was the same as before. And we've talked about this in Chapter 2. Uh, a top-down administration, their colonies were run directly by the crown, okay? Uh, there was no self-government in uh, the colonial government of Spain. The Spanish crown ruled through viceroys, which were kind of like governors, okay? If you could equate them to a, a present-day uh, official. Uh, so you had the viceroy, who would report directly to the crown. Below the viceroy, you had these uh, councils, these audiencias, uh, which would report to the viceroy, and then you had these local governments, these local councils, the corregidores, uh, who would report to the audiencias. So you had queen, king, viceroy, audiencias, corregidores, and that was how their uh, government was um, divided up colonially. Okay, we've talked about this. All right, here's their territory. We saw them in North America. They had a big presence, but that will really, really decline once the British and French get going there. That's going to go away. Um, uh, they had New Spain out here, uh, New Granada, Peru, uh, La Plata, all right, and Chile. All right, here are their uh, their main territories. We see them in North America, we see them in South America, um, and that was where their colonial empire was, uh, though greatly weakening during this time, okay? We're all in about 100 years. Uh, in the 19th century, we're going to see them lose it, okay? Here we go. And this picture shows a mine. Okay, it is very important to know that the, the, the reason, the main economic reason and motivation for Spain being over in the colonies was obviously to make money and uh, to have power and territory, but their main economic enterprise in the New World was, uh, was mining. They were the miners, and they were getting uh, gold and silver. Um, and this is uh, Potosi and Peru. This was the world's richest silver mine uh, for quite a while. And Spain was making a lot of money off that. And that feeds directly into the idea of mercantilism. Remember, uh, a key construct of mercantilism is to accumulate as much precious metals, gold, and silver as possible. And voila, here's an example of Spain trying to accumulate as much gold and silver as possible. Okay, Let's rock and roll. Um, so what are some examples and policies that Spain instituted to uh, maintain mercantilism in their colonies, okay, and they were very strict. Uh, Spain was incredibly, mer uh, an incredibly strict mercantile country. Their government con absolutely controlled the economy of Spain and therefore of their colonies. They were very strict. They only kept one Spanish port open for trade with the Americas, okay, which was Sevilla. All right, they did not want any illegal trade coming in. They wanted no smuggling, nothing. They, so they kept only one port open to uh, for trade with the Americas. Okay, and their um, government institution to help uh, regulate trade was called the Casa or uh, the 
uh, the Casa or the Casa de Contracion, which I believe translates into the House of Trade, if you can, if if I, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, um, for my translation. Uh, and this uh, this government, this Casa, functioned to uh, protect and serve Spanish commercial interests. They wanted those precious metals. Another uh, system that Spain instituted to uh, control their monopoly and control their system of mercantilism within the colonies was the, uh, the flota system, okay? Uh, and this system uh, made so that any trade outside of the flota was illegal. And this is really just a, a prime example of Spain trying to control its economy, making sure that its colonies only trade with Spain, Spain is only trading with its colonies, okay, which is, as as you guys can uh, guess, is the absolute opposite of capitalism, the absolute opposite of a free market that Adam Smith, uh, during the Enlightenment, is arguing for, and um, um, and we're going to see Spain, uh, you know, Spain's not going to really fall into capitalism for a while, um, but other countries, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, uh, will, and that is why they are going to become very rich and powerful. Okay, uh, politically, let's talk about what happens to Spain politically during this uh, during this time. And we know now that after uh, the war of Spanish succession with that Treaty of Utrecht, that Spain is now a Bourbon monarchy. Pop quiz: What's the other country in Europe during this time that is ruled by the Bourbons? France. Okay, first Bourbon king, Henry of Navarre. Paris is worth the mass. Got to know that for the AP test. Okay. Um, so, in the 18th century War of Spanish Succession, there are no more Habsburgs on the Spanish throne. They are the Bourbons, okay? The Bourbon family. Our first Bourbon king, Philip V, uh, uh, he, uh, he will really try to revive uh, Spanish uh, enterprise, economic enterprise, to suppress any smuggling outside of that flota system. Okay, he will establish a new viceroyalty of New Granada. Let's and if we go back. New Granada. Here we go. Woo! Okay, right up here establishes this brand new viceroyalty and uh, uh, government in uh, Latin America. Okay, uh, another Bourbon king that is uh, probably pretty important to know is Charles the uh, Third. He was a very important imperial reformer. Uh, he favored uh, royal representatives over local councils, so he was really trying to gain more uh, direct Spanish uh, imperial control over the over the colonies. Um, he will open more Spanish cities to trade with the Americas in hoping of really reviving his lagging economy. Remember, Spain's economy, uh, they're not no open to new ideas, they're not... Um, they're having that brain drain because they're really only allowing Catholics. There's no diversity in Spain. Uh, so he's really trying to revive their economy. Um, and, and he will do so by opening more Spanish cities to trade with the Americas. He will open more uh, colonial ports to trade with in their colonies. Uh, a new viceroyalty, La Plata, and I'll go back and show you all that uh, real quickly. Um, and he will really, he is really... Uh, trying to bring the Spanish Empire under uh, further Spanish control and he will uh, and he will um, garner the resentment of the Creoles. Uh, remember that that uh, social structure uh, that we talked about previously in chapter two, um, he will bring about resentment pretty much of anybody who is not a peninsulares or the highest of that uh, social structure okay uh, And let's quickly look at the uh, La Plata. that's the new um, vice royalty. Okay, right down here. Uh, current, uh, in pretty much uh, encompasses current day Argentina. All right, I will um, end that video, and we, I will next throw up a video that's talking a little bit about slavery, um, because we can't talk about this transatlantic trade, this transatlantic economy without slavery. All right, I will exit out of there and stop the video.